All right, welcome back to Bayou Time. I'm Jason DeGate. Uh, again, just for our viewers out there, we're taping live on Thursday night. It's about 6, uh, 625 if you're watching us live. If you'd like to call in, 879-1231. 879-1231 is the number to get involved. The legislative session just wrapped up. Uh, so we were talking with um, the local delegation um, calling in. At the opening segment was uh, State Representative Gordy Dove and also State Representative Joe Harrison. Uh, we invite any any member of the legislature who would like to call in, uh, you know, just to give us their update and their thoughts uh, on the conclusion. Um, we do have a, a few individuals who are going to be, um, I guess, term limited out, if you will, and we thank them for their service. Uh, Senator G Butch Gotro, who called in yesterday. Also, State Representative Damon Baldone is termed out of the House at this point in time. We thank him for his service to our area. And uh, also, Joel Chasson, who represents uh, Senator Joel Chasson, uh, who was the President of the Senate, is termed out, and he represents a portion of uh, Thibodeau. And I believe we have another member of the local delegation on the line. Jason, who is that? All right, Senator Narby Shaber is on the line, and uh, at this point in time, uh, we go to the next uh, member of the local delegation who uh, would like to call in, and that is Senator Narby Shaber. Senator Shaber, are you there? Hey, Jason. Yeah, how y'all doing? All right, doing, doing fine. We thank you for uh, calling in. Um, you know, the session just wrapped, it, wrapped up at 6 o'clock. Uh, things uh, wrapping up here, if you could give us uh, just your final thoughts or, or your overall quick summary just for the residents of Terrebonne and Lafouche Parish on uh, your thoughts on how the session uh, went this, this go around. Well, you know, it was a tough session uh, by every indication. Anytime you're going to have a budget deficit like we had, uh, you can't come out of it uh, unscathed. And uh, certainly, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be disappointed in. Uh, in the outcome, I think locally we fared pretty doggone uh, well compared to some other areas of the state. Um, you know, we, we've certainly got a lot of money that uh, we appropriated towards Morganza, which is great for our levy protection. Uh, that seems to be something that this governor uh, is committed to, the strength of Representative Dove uh, on the House side uh, in pushing uh, from his chairmanship as uh, the chairman of natural resources has really, really allowed us to, to capitalize on some much needed coastal restoration and hurricane protection funds. Uh, from on my side, from uh, being the vice chairman of the Senate Natural Resources Committee uh, as a freshman, uh, you know, being able to lobby my members uh, to support us uh, to not oppose that money. Uh, being allocated that very important project, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm real proud that we, that we were able to, to accomplish that in such tough fiscal time. Very good. And, and, and the question I have is, uh, we had uh, Representative Harrison that joined us just a few moments ago and also Gordy Dove, and they were mentioning that money from Marganza as HB2 was uh, just approved right before uh, the buzzer, if you will, at 6 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m. and Gordy had asked the question of whether his whether the Marganza money was still there and he was explaining that once it got to the Senate side uh, they had some amendments that were made and they were trying to take that out and he and Harrison were both saying that that efforts of yourself and uh, other members uh, were adamant to, to keep that money in there um, you know is it oftentimes you know is it difficult to convince people that it's important when it's not their money <laughs> and it's somebody else's well you know it it's it's a difficult task to to get money and bring it back home to your district you know so often so often people that are critical of politics and government uh can throw stones and scream and, and holler about pork barrel projects or or what is the, the new cat you know when Back in the day, everybody used to call it a pork barrel project when you built a bridge in your district or you paved the road or you built a levee, okay? And right. now it's in vogue to call these things earmarks, and the budgets are bloated with earmarks. Well, the people that are usually screaming from the governmental side about earmarks are usually the people that aren't getting them. And, you know, our capital outlay budget is a little, 
on the plus side of three hundred twenty million dollars. Uh, that's not a lot of money in a twi- in a twenty five billion dollar budget. But as you know, um, a lot of that money in our budget dedicated that has by law to go somewhere else. And our construction budget, you know, though it varies uh, in times of good economic times and in bad economic times, we will appropriate X amount of dollars for capital projects. And, uh, you know, like I said, the strength of Representative Dove and Representative Harrison, certainly, who is on the, uh, the Appropriations Committee, um, you know, th- those gentlemen were instrumental. So when you splitting up that limited amount of money amongst, you know, the, uh, the 64 parishes of the state of Louisiana, you were always going to have some people that get left out. And we, we were really well represented in the, um, in HB2, we, uh, which is the appropriate, which is the, uh, fa- capital outlay bill with the money from Organza. We've got over $8 million in that budget, uh, excuse me, $9 million now, uh, in that budget for Nickel State University uh, building improvements, uh, especially the Culinary Institute uh, building that they so desperately need. That program is their largest degree program and the fastest growing. And we are literally to the point where we're turning away students uh, from that valued program. Uh, The governor has named that program as a center of excellence. The Board of Regents has named that program as a a center of excellence. the, LS, the ULL board has named it a, uh, a center of excellence, and that allowed us to put emphasis on constructing a new state-of-the-art culinary building for our students. Um, so we got that money in. Uh, there's always going to be money uh, for roads and bridges that uh, are, are going to be allocated. We got the commitment from the governor. Uh, I led the delegation upstairs on to, to the fourth floor for a meeting of the, with the governor in the middle of this session that got him to agree that now that I-49 North has been complete, that the further funding of LA-1 from Leeville all the way to Golden Meadow is going to be his new big highway project. Uh, we're, we're looking to put $4 million uh, towards that project wow. into the budget next year. Okay. Um, and then certainly fund it at a higher rate uh, in subsequent years. But uh, we did fairly well in Capital Alley this year. But, you know, you can never underestimate how important it is for as much money that we got going to the Morgans of the Gulf Project, man. I'm there. there are a lot of places around the state that wish they had that, you know, that many millions of dollars going to hurricane protection, and, and we got it down here. Well, that's certainly good news for, for the people of our area, especially, you know, it gives us a little perk, if you will, going into hurricane season. We know, obviously, we can't apply that money right now and then, but, uh, boy, but you we, know we needed does, the Jason, money. Yeah. You know what it does? Citizens around this parish uh, have seen the, the vast improvement in some of our levy uh, around the area. You know, south of Chauvin, uh, we're just doing amazing things with, with, with our floodgates and our locks, and it's been almost constant construction at some place uh, in the parish uh, since, you know, the storms of Gustav and Ike. And, uh, you know, nobody knows that scenario more than me. You know, it's been said time and time again how, how my own family home uh, flooded repeatedly. Um, and, and, and this money just guarantees that those efforts are going to continue. We're not going to run out of money. We're not going to be sitting here on the sidelines with permits to build floodgates and levees and not have any money to do it. Now we got the per- we, we had the permits to build the floodgates and the levees, and now we got some money to help us along that process. But the fight is not over. We still need, a, some, we, we, we need to go up to Baton Rouge next year, fight the same fight. Uh, Representative Dove and I uh, had... Uh, uh, a meeting after hours with Garrett Graves, who's the head of the uh, Coastal Protection uh, and Restoration Authority, uh, who, who basically is the point man on coastal restoration and hurricane protection for the governor's administration. And the first thing he said when he walked in the meeting is, when are you guys going to stop asking us for money? Mm-hmm. And almost in unison, like we would have rehearsed it, uh, Representative Dove and I both said, Never, <laughs> you know, and, and he chuckled, but he, you know, he knows firsthand 
that the projects and the problems that we face are, are, are big projects because they're big problems, and we need big money to complete them. So uh, we need to go up next year and fight the same fight. Well, and, and we thank you, and we thank you for your leadership that uh, you've had. And as you mentioned, uh, being a freshman senator, you know. I, I, for one, wouldn't consider you a freshman with your background and the experience that you've had, uh, you know, in Baton Rouge. But just, you know, your overall personal experience, was it everything you thought being a freshman senator to just go around, uh, you well, know, and, 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 you know, how is it being able to work under local delegation who, who have been there for a little while? Because I know that you all work together. Well, the support that I've received from, you know, the overwhelming majority of, of our local representatives um, uh, from, from our parish presidents and our councils uh, have been have been tremendous and I couldn't have got through this this these trying two years without them uh, just about everybody in the delegation you know with the save of one or two members uh, were there to help me every step of the way uh, when when they saw me about to make a misstep procedurally or or, or something like that uh, they were always quick to point out hey why don't you look at it from this side and this will probably help us all accomplish our goal. Um, you know, we don't always agree, uh, but, but we work for the most part well together. That seems to be uh, a growing collective uh, same thought mentality that didn't that really didn't exist when I was elect initially elected. Um, you know, everybody would go out on your show and on the mic uh, on a radio station and say, "Yeah, we work well together." And behind the scenes, it was a lot of cat fighting. But that seems to really be uh, going away, and I look forward to working with uh, the members. Should I be blessed to be reelected? Um, I know I got a challenger. Um, I hope that that we'll do better next year, and we'll be able to all pull on the same rope in the same direction. Uh, but I tell you, Jason, I I'm not going to lie to you or to your to your listeners. Uh, I had a moment ye yesterday that that nearly brought me to tears, um, and I don't know if it was the Lord working. Uh, or what, but uh, as I was about to leave the Capitol, you know, at the day's long end, I, I was down in my office in the, in the basement, and I realized that I left my keys in my desk on the floor. <laughs> and so I went upstairs to get my keys, and, um, and the chamber was completely empty. Uh, the back doors were locked. Uh, I came in through the, through the member's elevator. I grabbed my keys and all the lights were on and, uh, you know, I just sat down in the chamber by myself and, you know, all for the past week, <clears throat> the term limited members and the members that weren't going to run for re-election have been get, given their goodbye speeches. And, you know, that, that really hit home for me because my father, uh, when he was the senator, you know, he was dying with cancer and he was still up there with a chemo pack on his side mm -hmm. making votes. And he had the tough son of a gun that he was, still believed his body riddled with cancer that he was going to come back. And he would represent the people of our area once again. And uh, unfortunately, you know, for us, the good Lord called him home, the, you know, good for him because he went to a far better place than this world. And then my brother had every intention uh, in his last day of running again. Uh, so he never gave a goodbye speech. But, uh, you know, he did, as you know, decide not to run for re-election, and then he went on to be uh, appointed to both the UL Systems Board and LSU Board of Supervisors, uh, and has enjoyed a, a, a great career in post-public service. But he never got to give a goodbye speech. And, uh, you know, I thought about that, and I, I, I just knew how blessed each one of us are to serve. To, for your people to send you up to Baton Rouge, in good times and in bad, and say, we want you to go up there and fight for us. It, it has been to this moment, and I don't have a wife and kid, so I can say this with, with a clean conscience and not go home and get the repercussion. <laughs> but to this point in my life, it has been the highlight to be able to serve the people of Terrebonne and Lafourche Parish as their senator. Never, ever thought that I'd be able to take that mic, look out on that body, and say, Mr. President, members of the Senate, I rise to either support a bill or to oppose a bill that either helps to hurt my people. And, you know, if, if I should be blessed to get reelected, uh, 
that'll be the highlight of, of my life. For them to say, hey, job well done, Norby Shaw Bear, and we want you to go up and continue your fight. So that's my experience as a freshman. Well, uh, very good, and uh, you know, we thank you for calling in. We thank you for, for your service in this first term of office that you've had. And uh, you know, I, I know there's a lot that you want to get done for the people of Lafourche and Terrebonne in the future. Uh, you know, some other bills you would like to move forward, some more money, more coastal protection. As you said, the fight is never over, and you've moved your way up, and we appreciate all you've done for our community. And uh, we wish you the best of luck in the future. And thanks again uh, for calling in just to give us a brief summary of your thoughts on the, uh, the wrapping up of the 2011 uh, legislative session. Thank you, Jason. Thank you very much. All right, with that, uh, you know, we continue to open up the phone lines, 879-1231. We've now heard from uh, Senator Narby Schaber, uh, Representative Gordon Dove, and Representative Jill Harrison. We invite, you know, any, uh, you know, local member who's, who's watching to call in just to give us their thoughts, uh, you know, on the session as it has wrapped up, um, their thoughts on the legislative session. You know, you heard last night from Senator Butch Gotro, uh, you know, who gave a speech, if you will, on the governor, uh, you know, giving his opinions about the governor. He is now termed out in, uh, as a senator, and so, uh, you know, that seat becomes an open seat, which is, uh, you know, represents much of Terrebonne uh, and mo more so of St. Mary Parish and a small portion of Lafourche Parish, so that's a Senate seat that will be open. Representative Damon Baldone is now termed out as a, uh, uh, a representative uh, serving his uh, terms, and so he is now turned out. But if, if any of these individuals would like to call in, that's perfectly fine, 879-1231, or they can call us on the business line, which is always open. And also, uh, Senate President Joel Chasson, as we mentioned earlier, is termed out, and he represents a small portion of the Thibodeau area in Lafourche Parish. So, uh, you know, they have some several seats that are going to be open. And, uh, you know, everybody's coming up for re-election once again. But, uh, you know, the session has uh, resolved itself. And uh, we'll take a short break. We have a number of people on the line. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll try to get to your phone calls right here on Bayou Time.